Hi guys, this is Alana with the Praying Christian Woman podcast. Thank you for joining us today. We have another coffee break episode where we take some of the questions that you guys have written in and gets to have some good discussions. So as always, I am with Jamie Hampton, my co-host, and let's jump into a word of prayer. God, we just thank you for this opportunity to connect with one of our listeners with a question that I know is relevant to many of our listeners. God, we just thank you so much for this time together. We just ask that you would help us to have wisdom and insight from your Holy Spirit and that everyone listening is is going to draw something from this conversation that Alana and I have. And we just give this to you for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you guys want to send us your questions, you can do that at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. And let's dive in. So our question today, um, do you have the name in front of you? We had it. And then oh, I, I do. It. And I, I don't think I put it in the notes. It's in our, oh, kit. Okay. not in our notes. And this is from Brittany. Got it. From Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hello, Brittany. Hi, Brittany. Thank you for listening and for this great question. Her question is how to pray for someone who's struggling to find their calling from God. I thought this was a great, relevant question. For sure. Yeah. So is the um, is a question like, how do I pray when I'm trying to find my calling? Or do you get the sense that it's how do you pray for someone else or so, some of both? I got the sense that it was for someone else. How do okay. you pray for someone? How do you pray for someone like, to find God's calling? Yeah. Right. yeah. Like your children or your husband mm-hmm. or your friend or whatever mm-hmm. that's yeah searching yeah. for their purpose. Well, you know, the first thing that comes to mind for me is to try not to, like if I'm thinking about my kids and I'm praying for my kids and their calling, I'm probably going to be inserting a lot of my own wishes. Do you know what I mean? Oh my goodness. Yes. And please give them a great wife who's just going to love me and she can be the daughter I've never (laughs) had and we can go shopping for, you know, baby clothes. Like, (laughs) so I think that's, or, you know, especially if we're talking about praying for your husband, you know, um, there's so much that could turn selfish in how you pray for that. And so I think maybe the first one is to just make sure that you're, and nobody's going to be like perfectly clean with their motives, you know what I mean? And perfect selfless. But um, I think in as much as we can to recognize that we want God's will for this person even more so than our own is probably the first place to go. And maybe even while you're praying, just try to discern, is this something that I'm praying just because I'm selfish? Like who doesn't want to pray that God would keep their kids from harm? You know what I mean? Right. And I don't think that's bad to pray, but there's also the point where we really do need to surrender, you know, our loved ones to the Lord. Right. And I think, like you said, kind of to expound on that, the prayer isn't, God, help me find my calling for this person, you know, help me to know your calling for this person's life necessarily, mm-hmm. um, which I don't know. Uh, then. On the other hand, so I have, um, I have a friend and she is a pastor's wife and has talked about how there are times when she has heard like in their marriage in particular, she feels like God speaks to her first. And some of that he, for, you know, for their, the direction of their life, their Mm -hmm. lives, Mm -hmm. um, but she almost feels like it's for her because she has to be, you know, a submissive wife and doesn't want to overstep in the area of waiting and allowing God to speak to her husband also. So she's had to kind of exercise self-control and learn from trial and error. But, you know, anyway, so on this hand, you know, I think in her case, there are times when she feels like, hey, I think God has given me this thing to pray for specifically for my husband or his direction or our direction, but she never assumes that she's heard right. She has an idea, and because of their past history of God speaking to her first, her waiting, him coming back with the same thing that confirms their direction, um, I think it's important Okay, so this is the roundabout way of saying sometimes God might say, hey, if you're praying for your kid, God might give you a specific vision of what your child is going to do um, with their life or one aspect of that. And that's great. But A, 
take it with a grain of salt and and still remain open handed and just continue to pray for confirmation of that. But um, I don't know. Just I think there's a really fine line, and I think we need to definitely, if God gives you a verse for your child or a picture of how to pray for them or your husband or whatever else. I don't believe that we should shrink back from that because we're afraid of overstepping. But at the same time, I think we need to leave room for God to work and try to remain like a degree of neutrality until that confirmation comes. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. I think that many people, if they think that they've heard something from God, like let's say, I'm getting the sense that God's telling you to come and move next door to me, <laughs> which would be super fun. All right. So if I, I you sent me an email to that effect, I recently. might have done that at one point. I'm trying to convince <laughs> you, but, um, you know, so let's say I'm praying and it just like, I get this vision from God that, you know, the Hampton family moves next door to us. My default for that is not to run out and tell you, okay, Jamie, I got a word from God for you. <laughs> right. You know, my default is to just pray through that. Yeah. And for sure, like if you were to come to me and be like, hey, we're thinking about moving, I might eventually share <laughs> that thing. But for the reasons you mentioned, you know, the, I think the default really should be God's not telling me this so that I can make it happen or so that I can tell you it's going to happen, but really just so that I can pray, you know, and um, my husband and I had something very similar to the friend that you're talking about where I really got the sense that we were going to be moving to Alaska a couple of weeks before it even like touched my husband's radar. Wow. You know, it wasn't like um, Alaska was one of three options. And I'm like, yeah, I think it's going to be Alaska. It was like, there's 50 states in the union. Alaska is where we're headed. Right. <laughs> and then like, you know, and kind of for the same reasons of your friend. I wasn't, I didn't feel like it was my job to just go and say, Hey, guess what? God just told me we're heading to Alaska. My, I felt my job was to just pray through it. Wait, recognize I might not have heard. Right. Mm -hmm. And then about, you know, maybe two weeks later, Scott comes in and it's just this big joke. Cause it's um, just this quintessential line says, you know, I've been thinking. And so whenever like we want to pretend like we're about to move or something, we start with that. It was like, what do you think about Alaska? Like, oh well, yeah, yeah. I kind of think that that's where we're headed next. Um, like, so yeah, but surprised. Yeah, yeah. And I think you know, I'm sure that there are some times where you know God might show us something so that we can get that ball rolling. But in my mind, the the default is to just take it kind of like Mary, you know, store it up in your heart. Yes. And then at that point, if God tells you or really impresses on you, hey, it's time to take some kind of other action. Well, then you pray a whole lot more mm -hmm. <laughs> and ask for even more discernment. I just, I'm very uncomfortable with, um, you know, like let's take that thing with you moving next door. Even if like the vision I got was as clear as day, like you guys all next door, the deed signed, I would still never, I don't want to say never, but I can't imagine a scenario and I've never been in a scenario where it would be, Hey, guess what, Jamie? God's told me that you guys need to move here. Right. You know, I think, I'm just yeah. not comfortable with, with that because we don't have perfect track records of hearing from God. Yeah. We have, I mean, obviously we're joking about you being our next door neighbors. There's so much selfishness that would go in that. Like <laughs> how much would our family love that? A whole lot. So, you know, I think that's just another, another thing. Like sometimes I feel, I know people who have been so, just overt in those kinds of things that it can leave a really bad taste in someone's mouth. Like, yes. Oh my goodness, honey, God told me I have to pray for you because you're about to die. I'm like, I'm right. <laughs> Sorry. Don't go on that trip that I really would rather you not go on. Cause you'll probably die on the way there. And I'm not saying that those things don't ever happen. Like we even no. see that in acts where Paul They're gets, you know, direct warnings, but to be to the point where you would put it in that kind of way, I'm just very, not comfortable with that. And I would just encourage people listening to just, you know, to be gentle, gracious, humble, all of those things. And extremely cautious, you know, handle God's word with care in every, yes. you know, every respect. For sure. Yep. Well, I think one other thing before we get into some specific ways that we can pray that, I, that came to my mind is the pressure that it puts on yourself or someone else to assume that we just have this one calling 
and that if we somehow miss that one calling that we're totally done for, we've messed up our lives. I think that's a lot of pressure. And so I think the question is, do we just have one calling? Um, you know, and it, it, there's a whole theological, theological, the, theological, <laughs> A theological debate. Yes, that's the word. <laughs> about, I know. I was. Is it theologic? No, theological <laughs> debate about you know God's God's sovereignty and predestination. But the bottom line is, like, I just think keeping in mind that where that person is right now is part of the journey of their calling. And there are things you know, and I think we'll get into that in some of the ways that we pray for people. But not to put pressure of like one calling. I, and I think there are different kinds of callings. I think there are, you know, within the church, there are callings um, that are career. There are callings that are spouse, that are family related. There's so many callings. And so I, I really think today that this question that Brittany was asking, though, I think this is about probably someone who is is trying to figure it out trying to think what am i here for i feel like god has designed me a certain way for something what do you want from me god you know and so i think this is a big a big calling but i think maybe not to put so much pressure on that one thing and to kind of back up and say okay there's a lot that god is calling you to do what are these different things and and recognizing that where you are right this moment searching for that calling is the first step and you're in God's will at that point looking to him for for answers yeah yeah you just um opened up a huge I mean there's so many worms that could jump out of this can I know we can but um but no I mean it's it's interesting at the very least it's an interesting question to ponder Mm -hmm. um I heard someone, you know, this comes up a lot in terms of who you marry, you know, does God yeah. have one, one person that you are called to marry? Um, I've heard so many different versions of this, you know, in my story with Scott, it was very clear. God brought us together. I have no problem, you know, knowing that we were destined to be together, all of that stuff. But, you know, if you look at the fact that there are however many billion people on the planet, you know, I do believe that there are more than one person that you could have a happy marriage with. Do you know what I mean? Do you get what oh, I'm yeah. saying? Like, definitely. Um, it's not, not as if you, and then here's the other kind of the other extreme side of that. Someone was kind of rebutting this argument that God only has one person in, in mind for you to marry. And he was like, well, then what happens if one person makes a mistake? You know, so the person that's supposed to marry John <clears throat> marries George. Right. It throws so God's now plan John, all out of whack. Yeah. And then John has to marry someone else. And then that person, you know, so if you look at it that way, it does make it a little ridiculous in terms of, um, well, no, like one person in Minnesota making a bad marriage choice isn't going to doom the rest of humanity to have the wrong spouse. (laughs) Right. I I think another thing to be super cautious of is like, if you're married, then that is the person that you're married to, you know, and maybe you did make a mistake. Like I I don't feel like um, that's too harsh to say, like, especially if you're, if you were a Christian and you married someone who was not a Christian, I think, I'm totally fine saying, yes, you made a mistake, but now that person is your husband. Right. And so, you know, there are certain stipulations if you're, you know, married to an unbeliever, but do you get what I'm saying? Like yes. some people kind of take this to mean, oh, I made a mistake in round one. I didn't go with the person God told me to go with. This wasn't God's best for me. So now I'm free to move on to rounds two. Mm. Um, you got to be careful with that also. So I guess I'm, I'm a little bit, I have a foot in both camp. For me, I have no problem with this mentality that there are many people that you could be compatible with. And um, as long as you're not going against scripture, you know, which basically just means marrying an unbeliever, you know, and are using wisdom. Um, I don't think that like you're sinning <laughs> for marrying somebody, you know, even Paul says that if this guy wants to marry this woman, go ahead. They're not sinning to get married. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think about it in that way, but I also think about it <clears throat> in terms of, well, yes, when I was, you know, born, God knew exactly who I was going to marry. And so there kind of is a sense of destiny 
in that part too. Do you get what I'm saying? I so do. Yeah. There's freedom to choose your spouse. It's obviously something to go into with tons of prayer, but there's also, um, there also is the fact that God foreknew this from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. And I think that particular specific example of a calling, calling to a spouse, it can translate to any other calling, whether it's a career or whatever, you know, to a job is, is yeah, that there is some freedom within that, but there, there also is. I mean, if you're, it's very wise to go to God for counsel and to, to get him to, to move forward. But then I think about God's faithfulness and sovereignty and, and the, this was for, I don't even, I think this was, oh no, this was for this part. I had written down this passage from, um, about Samson from, I don't know if I wrote down the reference. Anyway, it was, My own um, judges. yeah. So it was about Samson and wherever it is, it's, um, verse 14. <laughs> And it looks like chapter 14. Oh, right? chapter 14. Yeah. Judges 14. There we go. We solved it. Hey, it's we're good. So Samson went down to Timnah and saw there a young Philistine woman. When he returned, he said to his father and mother, I've seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. His father and mother replied, isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among all, your pe all our people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, get her for me. She's the right one for me. And then in parentheses, I just love this. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines for at that time they were ruling over Israel. So Samson's desiring this Philistine woman went against God's decree and uh, that they should marry. I'm, I'm almost positive, right? That they, they were told. Right. No, this was again. Yeah, this, this is against was God's law. Law, yeah. So this particular thing for Samson was sin, and yeah. and that's not to justify it as like we should not knowingly make sinful choices, but in terms of, um, I think this should bring comfort to us when we're praying for the destiny of our loved ones, particularly our children. I think that we're just and, and our husbands, you know, where um, if we see them making bad choices not to be discouraged that they've thrown their life. Okay. Yes, there could be consequences. Yeah. But God could still be in this and, and be using this to get them to a different place or to, to further his plans. Um, I don't know. It just, the idea is that God knew Samson's heart was going to be for a Philistine woman. And, you know, he was basically, you know, God basically allowed this because of, of a bigger plan that he had. And I look back on my own mistakes and I think of my own mother who prayed and, you know, probably cried over many of my mistakes as a younger person. And, um, and I look back and, and many of those mistakes have actually in the long run, they've brought me closer to God and they've equipped me to, do things or to, to be places that I would not have been without them. And I'm not justifying sin in any way, but I think it's another facet of this idea of being helpless. We cannot make a decision for someone else right. in terms of what they can do with their life. Mm -hmm. We can just keep on praying because I am totally convinced that it was the prayers of people that loved me that protected me from some things that, um, that allowed God to open doors and to work through that just for him to, to, to stay with me and, and to take me through these different mistakes and bring me to the places that he wanted me to be when I myself may not have been praying for that or looking for his will for me, but other people were. So I don't know. That's just kind of a little encouragement and an aside. Yeah, for sure. And I'm, I'm glad you emphasized that this doesn't give us freedom. I think this speaks no. more to the people who are praying for someone who might be making a wrong choice. Correct. Right. As opposed to the person who's seeking justification for making no, no, no. a wrong choice. Right. Do not. Yeah. We don't want to justify sin in any way for any reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, I do think that our prayers can, can sometimes help soften some of those consequences. Um, you know, and I know of people who take the opposite extreme, who kind of want, it, it really, um, I'm curious to hear your take on this conversation I had, because I had some kind of strong-ish feelings, and I don't know if my feelings are going to copy your feelings. So overheard this lady, Christian lady, 
and I think her kids were getting into like the preteens and like this isn't exaggerating this is almost verbatim what she said like I can't wait till they get to their rebellious stage because when I rebelled that's what like made me hit rock bottom which is why I had to turn to God yeah no I I <laughs> definitely I think that is a caricature of what I believe to be true but it's, uh, uh -huh. so what I believe to be true is that if you make poor choices, sometimes you might need to hit rock bottom to find God, but I mm -hmm. absolutely don't believe that's a necessity. I, I, I believe that it's totally possible mm -hmm. to make choices to live a godly life from an early age and to have an abundant, you know, nobody's perfect but right. to, live, to live a life and to make choices where, because, you know, during that, like I look back on some of my choices that might not have been right or good. Mm -hmm. And there weren't, uh, there were consequences to some of those things that would not have been there if I hadn't gone through that. And there could have been much worse consequences. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I definitely yeah, I, I disagree. I definitely don't want my kids to rebel. Um, on the other hand, you know, kind of like I said, it's a caricature of kind of what I believe. So like I have one of my children is extremely intellectual in terms of like mm -hmm. dissecting Bible verses and, right. and scripture and questioning and almost mm -hmm. to the point of doubting because of intellect. Mm -hmm. And my prayer for him is that he would, that those questions would drive him to God, that even right. though they seem to be, you know, I would love for him to just say, oh, you know, I just believe because I just have this in me that I believe, but, you mm -hmm. know, I believe that God has given him that mind for a reason. And I want those things to ultimately drive him to God. Yeah. Instead but, of just force feeding it down his throat. Sure. But there's always the chance that those questions could divide him from God indefinitely. It's a little frightening. And so, no, I don't wish that on him. But now that he's got those, I'm praying fervently and having conversations and, you know, and I'm, I've, I have seen movement in great ways. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, I, I do not, I'm not definitely couldn't say that I can't wait for a rebellious stage. Yeah. I believe that we don't have to go through that to, yeah. Yep. I agree. Well, anything else you wanted to add? I know we had some other. Yeah. Other just like some people. prayers, you know, just, just some mm -hmm. different things. And, you know, we put some just kind of a few just general prayers that we could pray for them and some scriptures. And I'll try to put these verses in our, um, in our descriptions for the oh, um, good idea. You know, just references in our, in our video descriptions, uh, video and audio descriptions for the podcast episode, just so that you have those in your hands. But um, yeah, we just have a few kind of basic things you could be praying for someone. You want to start or do you want me to? Uh, why don't you, since you're more familiar with our okay. notes in this one. Well, so we, we covered number one, which is pray for your own heart first. Do like a preliminary prayer saying, God, Help me to be objective. Help me to be, you know, in a good place mm -hmm. here and, and seeking your will and, and seeking them to find your will. And I think the first step of is for that person to have open ears and eyes, that they would um, hear God's voice, that the noise mm -hmm. would be silenced. And, you know, um, the scripture that I had for this was Isaiah 30, 21. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And you can pray that verse over that person, just that God would be the, vo the voice that this person hears. Yeah, no, I really like that verse and just that picture of God guiding as you're moving even, you know, because I think some of us, like we don't want to move until we hear God's voice. And, you know, here at the very least, it's, you know, what, whether you're turning to the right or the left, God's voice is going to guide you. I have a friend who compares it. Have I told you my GPS analogy that she used? I don't like think so. How when a GPS is giving you directions, like you actually have to be moving for it to be able to give you directions. Oh, uh, I like that. Yeah, you know, and, and I do think that there are times where we are meant to like, you know, just kind of sit and wait. But mm -hmm. 
there are other times where, you know, if there are two roads offered to you and you've prayed and have sought godly counsel and neither one of these seems inherently sinful or anything like that, I think that unless <clears throat> you've got, um, you know, like a check in your spirit about that, I think it's totally fine to just start down one of those roads and trust that if God wants to redirect your course that he will. And you'll hear you know. recalculating. Exactly. That's Did exactly you hear it. the Australian accent? Ours is Australian. <laughs> oh, that's recalculating. funny. Recalculating. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, because sometimes I feel like Christians can almost get a little superstitious when it comes to big life choices. And I think yeah. it's, it's so good to pray and to seek God. But God doesn't... God's not obligated to answer our questions exactly when we ask him to. Do you know what I mean? Well, and my experience is that he rarely does. I mean, yeah, and I think it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's different. You know, there are some people who go their whole lives with, you know, like we really like, as long as you're not going against what God says in the Bible, you're, you really are fine. Like <laughs> having, you know, the discernments to kind of sense God's will is nice, but I feel like we have everything that we need to obey God in scripture. And so sometimes I think that we can, can be kind of superstitious. Like I refuse to move an inch until I know exactly what God's telling me to do. And like I said, sometimes I do think it's wise to wait, but other times I think it's just, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Come on guys, get moving. Yeah, I think yeah. so. And the, the one, the next one that actually kind of goes along with that is um, a little further down on the list, but it, for a heart that seeks after God, we can mm -hmm. pray that this person will have a heart that seeks after God. And not only will they hear his voice, but that they'll be just actively seeking him step by step. And Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And that's just, I go back to that when I am in the midst of decision making, mm -hmm. because rarely with big life decisions, have I seen a neon sign or has it been clear cut? And my husband and I even joke about it. Like, well, of course it's not, you know, this job is, you know, double your salary in an area right. that, you know, is half the cost of living or, you mm -hmm. know, where your family lives. I mean, there, it's never a no brainer. It's always, there always gives and takes. And so I always comfort myself that as long as I am seeking him, I'm going to eventually get to the right place. You know, as long as we really want what God wants, he's not going to let us down. And I think about, um, you know, uh, Jonah, he tried to run from God. He tried to run from his calling. And what did God do? I mean, he didn't let him escape. And I know Jonah is only one man and he was a prophet and he's a major, you know, person in the Bible. But, you know, God placed him in the belly of a fish so that he, you know, and, and spit him back out where he needed to do ministry rather than let him escape. So I do feel like if we're God's person, if, if the person you're praying for is God's person, if they're seeking him, God's got them. You know, I believe God is going to make sure and, and, and allow this person to, to be in a good place, to be in the right spot. Yeah, that's interesting. With, um, with Jonah, I almost take it a little bit to the opposite where I know in my life sometimes the story of Jonah gives me a really sinful excuse to be terribly stubborn. Because right. I'll be like, well, I don't want to do this, but God, if you really, really want me to, I know you're going to make me. So, oh, so I'm not going <laughs> to take action. You better get that fish yeah. to swallow me and do yeah. something miraculous. And so I don't think the fish is guaranteed to come. I do think oh, that's true. And this is, here's a whole other can of worms. I do think that it is possible to miss your calling and not fulfill the purpose that God created you for, to still be a child loved by God, you know, to still have rich rewards waiting for you in heaven, but to have not really accomplished what you could have had your life been more surrendered to the Lord. I don't know and, what you think. But no, that is that a really is good. No, I, that's a really good flip side. And I think you're, mm -hmm. I think you're right. I think, I think I, I definitely think you're right. And I think that knowledge rather than being depressing is inspirational. I mean, it I just should be for sure. You know, yeah. It should be inspirational. No matter how old you are, 
you're still mm-hmm. here and yeah. you can still do amazing things. God can do amazing things through you. And I just think of this story and I, it was in either in Sunday school or in guideposts or I don't know where I saw it, but it was this, you know, this man stumbles into a church and after years of turning away from God and he's elderly and he goes and confesses, you know, professes faith in Christ and he has this enlightenment and he starts sobbing and they ask, you know, why are you crying? And, and his only words were, I've wasted it you know, about his life. And that's, yeah, that is depressing. <laughs> you know, that is depressing that, you know, maybe long ago, if he had recognized his calling, he could have, you know, done other things, but you could look at it a different way and say, okay, but he, he got it. I mean, For it sure. doesn't matter how old he was, he got it. He, he, can't waste the rest and God can do exactly. amazing acts of redemption. You know, I'll mm-hmm. repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, you know, yeah. he can do incredible things no matter what. So for sure. Yeah. Amen. Well, are there any other prayer points you kind of wanted to highlight before we wrap up? Um, contentment was one like first Thessalonians five, 16 to 17. And to realize that, you know, a spirit of prayer and thanksgiving is God's calling on everyone's life. You know, rejoice, always pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. This is God's will for you. Um, another one is to recognize whatever they're doing right now is their calling. That's where they are right now. And, you know, Colossians three twenty three. whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as if working for the Lord, not human masters. So, not to, you know, for that person, not to be so concerned with future that they miss what God has for them right at this moment Mm -hmm. on the journey to that calling. Um, And then the last one was just for themselves and for others around them to recognize their God-given gifts. And you can look at 1 Corinthians 12 about the many bodies of Christ and the many members and different giftings and things, because I think once they recognize their gifts, others around them recognize their gifts can call them up into the callings that God has given them. For sure. Yeah. Well, good. Thank you for the the good discussion. Thank you for the question. Again, if you have questions, you can submit those to us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. And I think we're going to close with the prayers for the unsaved, right? Yep. Yeah. We'll just, uh, you want to just totally close with that? Okay. We will do that. And Brittany, I hope we, got this right. Sometimes when we read these questions, we're not sure if we're going on the right tangent, but our prayer is that this really um, answered your question and and we know that it will be something that other people will probably have as a question too. So so now we are going to pray for the, what is it? Three to five? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Three to five people that God has placed on your heart to pray for. Um, Yeah, and if you enjoy these prayers for the unsaved, you can go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved, and you can actually get these prayers delivered to your inbox, one a day for 30 days, and you have 30 different prayers. So let's pray. God, please be with my friend today. Please put a desire in their heart to know you. Even if they don't know why they're doing it, please inspire them to seek after you. If my friend has spiritual questions, God, please don't be far from them. Please put them on the right path to find your truth, whether from the Bible, another Christian, or any other way you choose to reveal yourself. Thank you that you're not the kind of God who sits back and hides while others are seeking your face. Please be close to my friend today. Please show them who you are and help them find the answers to all the questions they have about you and your unmatchable grace. Amen. Amen.